Okay, I'm going to do a little video here on how to do um, the brake bleed on the Endeavor trike system. And uh, all my trikes are exactly the same as far as the braking system. Doesn't make any difference if it's got link brakes or D-link brakes or ABS, doesn't matter. Uh, they're all set up the same way. The plumbing is exactly the same. So this procedure fits all the trikes that I do. A uh, couple components here are the, uh, the master cylinder, which is up in the handlebar. That is the factory master, and I, I normally leave those as is. Uh, that leads down to a, uh, the red and blue thing there is a residual press, pressure valve. And what that does is it allows fluid to flow one way, and it restricts the fluid backflow. <clears throat> and it holds a little bit of pressure on the calipers here so that the pistons don't fully retract. They, uh, they just clear the rotor and that's really all you need. And uh, consequently, uh, if you're thinking about putting uh, speed bleeders on, uh, it's really a wasted effort because uh, the valve that I have in here actually does exactly the same thing. So you don't have to worry about spending the extra money on speed bleeders, just uh, use the standard ones that are here. And the procedures uh, laid out in the, the following segment here. But I'm just going through the components. So from the, uh, from the hand lever there, it goes to residual. It goes down to a, uh, a T. Let's see if I can get zoomed in there a little bit better. It goes down to the T, which branches out uh, into a coupling and then in the, uh, the stainless steel line that goes out to each caliper. And uh, places to examine when you do the bleeding procedure and you're all done and checking for any kind of leakage is underneath here. Uh, this joint right here and on the inside, on each side, and then the, the T, and then the residual valve. If there's a leak anywhere, it's going to be one of those locations. And uh, I normally check these things pretty, pretty closely. But anyway, the next part of this video will uh, go through the actual procedure. This is Norman Endeavor Trikes, and uh, I just bled out the brakes on this bike, and I thought, you know what, I should do a video on uh, how this is done on, on my Endeavor uh, reverse trike conversion, so that uh, I'm sure, you know, the owners at some point will want to flush out the brake fluid and, and uh, change it. And uh, it's a real simple task on these, so I thought I'd kind of go through the procedure here a little bit. Uh, one thing I'll mention is, um, a lot of people will go out and buy uh, speed bleeders and they replace the bleeder valve on the calipers and what it is is it's one-way valve so it allows fluid to uh, go out but it doesn't allow, uh, allow any um, backflow and uh, those are actually a really good product but it's kind of a waste of money to put them on here and I, the reason I'm saying that and it's not that I'm against them or anything like that it's just that it's a waste of money because this already has uh, that uh, product installed in a way. If I zoom over here, you'll see that red thing right there. Uh, here's one just like it. If I can get it in focus here for you. And it's a one-way valve. And this is a residual back pressure valve is what this is called. A uh, real common thing for race car drivers to use. And uh, a lot of trike companies use them. And what it actually does is it allows the uh, brake fluid to, uh, to flow into the calipers, but then it resists the flow back, so it holds a little bit of pressure. And what that does is it prevents the calipers from, uh, the pistons from sliding way back in the calipers. And that way, you know, you'd have to grab the lever and actually pump it in order to get the, uh, the pistons back out to where they're supposed to be. So what this holding a, a couple pounds of pressure on, on the system, what that does is it just prevents the pistons from retracting all the way back. They just retract enough to clear the rotors and, and that's really all you want. So um, putting bleed bleeders on would really just add an extra backflow valve, which would be, uh, because it'd be in series, it just wouldn't uh, be feasible and wouldn't be uh, uh, economically uh, sound to do that. So that's just a little word on that. Uh, otherwise, the bleeding procedure itself is pretty straightforward. You know, you take the cap off the reservoir. And uh, for me, I had to go out and buy a uh, impact Phillips um, screwdriver to get the screws out of these um, master cylinders because everybody tightens them up so much 
that you end up drilling them out and a lot of times that can break them loose with an impact uh, screwdriver. So that's one thing I'll mention right now is those should just be finger tight snug and not tighten down. There's a rubber gasket there you don't have to tighten them down so uh, it's a good idea not to you know overdo it on those. Uh, on these one thing I made was this has got a little adapter here kind of thing and uh, this is just you know regular uh, soft plastic hose I think it's surgical hose and I've got um, some brake line in here and I made a 90 degree here because we got the fender the fender bracket right there so if you pull the cap off this thing will slip right on here and then I hook it up on there and it makes a nice bend and won't come off and I always mount my my bleeder bottle which is right there I always mount it higher than the caliper and the reason I do that is any bubbles that come out of the caliper will stay up in the line and tend to go up into the uh, the highest point so I always put the bottle up there and all I use is just a plastic bottle I drill the hole in it and stick the hose in there and that's really all you need and uh, and then the, the procedure is pretty simple uh, loosen up one side fill up you know make sure your um, master is full give it a couple pumps usually I put my hand over the top of the deal because there is a uh, pressure relief hole in the masters a lot of times and it'll actually squirt a little bit of fluid up in the air so I cover everything up with uh, uh, sheets and everything so there's no way that brake fluid can get on the paint and uh, then I put my hand over the reservoir when I pump it just to make sure that it doesn't spray up in the air and uh, on most of these if I fill them to the top I give them eight pumps and then I fill them up again give them eight more close the valve on one side go to the other side and do the same thing and uh, the brake lever should be pretty solid uh, on these it's not I would say rock hard there'll be a little bit of sponginess um, especially when they're new because these uh, these pads are real thick and the calipers are real thick and uh, it takes a little while for the shoes to get seated in so it doesn't feel extremely firm initially but when you're driving down the road you just touch the lever and she's going to stop and as you um, go further and further it does get um, more firm so uh, just a couple words there but otherwise you know it's a pretty simple deal it's uh, you know just a pair of lines they tee off back in there you can see the T and the lines actually I'll see if I can follow one of the lines here and it goes right back into the caliper and uh, and I use a braided uh, stainless steel line as you can let's see I get it focused in here so it's a braided line so I use all the high high-end braided lines and everything and um, but the, the bleeding procedure is really that simple and uh, you know like anything else you just want to make sure you get all the air out and check for leaks you know um, you don't have to again you don't want to tighten these things down to the point where you're going to strip them or anything like that but you do want to get them snug and you do want to um, grab the lever and hold pressure for a minute or so and then go around with your finger and, and touch every joint and make sure that you don't have any uh, any seepage but uh, other than that that's really all there is to uh, to bleeding out the brakes on these 